So this one will be in addition to uh, St. Vincent's stress, uh, the working function, and Prandtl's stress function, this will be the third one. And the way we can try is this, and on the handouts, let me write it up here. So in terms of the membrane, and in terms of our, um, the, uh, the torsion, of shaft. So here, let me make um, the write it up here. So this one, V is the. Let me write it up here first. Okay, phi is the Prandtl stress functions compared to membrane. Membrane is a material, for example, here is a membrane, okay. Um, membrane is a very special terminology being used in material, mechanics material. Basically, that is to indicate a material model, and this material model can only sustain um, the in-point tensions, okay, and um, this one, uh, membrane has no capability of taking bending moment, okay. If we set a material model that would be able to take the bending, we call, that's called a beam or plate, okay. If we call the material, and uh, that can uh, substitute tension, uniaxial tension, like loading we call bar, okay? A shaft is to indicate that like under torsion. So those kind of the names, we do have a special meaning, indications behind. So for membrane, if you consider, say, take this free body diagram, and from the side view, let me take as this string, okay? So in this way, along the tangents in this direction, along the tangent of these directions, so that is a tangent, tension that is in the uniform uh, stretch, okay? So that is the tension applied and nothing else, nothing else. So that is we give, we use this name membrane as to indicate that can only carry the tension like um, the loading, nothing else, okay? And if you say, hey, for this model, are we going to have considered the moment? No, okay, because here for membrane, we simply don't consider any moment like because simply if we want to consider moment then we have to use the plate as a, they call the plate theory that's a standalone chapters there okay so so that's a membrane so here is the tensions and tension basically is a force you can define the tension as a force per unit length or force per whatever so for this case you refer to the appendix and we have the formula for describing the behavior of the tension of the, um, the membrane, okay? So for example here, uh, let me say, um, this one, uh, say this is a membrane, and let me consider, it, um, how to say, okay, right now I draw in this plane, so this is the x direction, and y direction out of the port, and this is a z direction, okay? So basically, you can imagine initially, for example, the membrane, and you can imagine just like uh, the kids played a uh, bubble, right? So we have the metal ring, and we have the kind of the thin film, bubble film there. And if nothing, if nothing there, basically the film is kind of flat. If we blow the certain air not to break in it, like this one, then you can see this membrane basically will pop out in that direction, right? So basically, initially, if the membrane is flat and under certain pressure, you're going to press it up, okay? So that means in this way, at any point, we call uh, diffraction, they call the lateral diffraction, okay?
So basically here we apply the pressure similar to here we have the ring and we have a bubble film that will blow it, then this membrane will be pop out, pop out in that direction. Okay. So for this model, we have uh, the garment equations is like this. Consider that's a two-dimensional, and again, y, uh, y direction is out of, uh, sorry, using right-hand tool. Y is, y is pointing in, okay, x, y, z. So we consider two-dimensional. Oh, um, so for this one, we can have this one, P divided by, sorry, let me change my symbols. Tension, usually tension, and for my lecture notes, rather than T, I use S. Okay, so basically S is the tension in the membrane. So here, the this one is the lateral deflections of membrane, and P is the pressures uh, applied. Okay. And S is the tension in memory. So you can compare the garment equations between the uh, for the memory and for our shaft in terms of kind of stretch function. You can see that basically it's one to one. Uh, can analog to one to one. Okay, so basically the analog you can see. Let me make up the table here. So, for example, here you can see um, this one compared to basically that is our handle stretch function, okay? And for P and S really depends on your preference. And here I assign is, for example, I corresponding P equal to G, and then I corresponding S equal to. Um, the two beta or beta. I think in my lecture notes, I uh, here I I have a typo there. I forgot to so add it up. Okay. And you say, can I have p analog to beta and vice versa? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, for this one, furthermore, we have is this. For this case, you can see partial this one corresponding to. Let me run it up closer here. So this one basically corresponding is this, okay? This one corresponding is this one. And on the other side, if you remember kind of stress function, this one is our definition of minus tau yz. And this one is our definition of tau uh, xz or tau zx, either way, okay? And on the other side, for this one, we have such uh, integral. If you remember these portions and multiply by two, this one equal to t over torque. Okay, that is from last time we have. So corresponding to this one, we make up the same thing. Two on the same template. And phi corresponding is this one. And dx dy. Okay. So what is this? The integral here basically indicating is, for example, this is a membrane and be blowing under the pressure. So this indicating basically is a volume below the bulged uh, membrane profile, right? So here I would say volume. So let me call B. So basically this one corresponding is to B. So which means the torsions we apply to a shaft corresponding in compared to in analog to that one corresponding is to B here. Okay. And then maybe I can combine 
is this. Maybe in this way I can combine is for the two things, let me just combine. Um, I run it out of space. So basically P over S will compare the right hand side P over S compare this one simply is two G beta. I think that will be more lunar uh, for standard. Okay. And with those things, we can uh, using we can use our intuition, uh, imaginations of the membrane state again. This is a metal ring. Okay, for so example, I make this circular shape, and we put into the uh, the the soap film. We put into soap and to make a bubble film here. Okay and then we blow it, and in this way, once I blow on this side, you can imagine the membrane will be expanded, kind of bulged in that direction with certain, uh, we call the contour, like this one, right? You see what I'm saying? Okay, for example, let me draw in 3D view. So if this is the metal ring, we have a flat membrane before I apply pressure from underneath, once the pressure is applied, then the membrane will bulge in that direction, something like this shape, right? So in this way, this is the, you can imagine, basically that is a level, that's a level curve, or we could contour for this one, right? Good. And how can we utilize this one? The first thing is, I don't know which, orientation you like. For this one, let me say this is X direction, Y direction, and the bulging, the, the bulge direction, let me call Z, or otherwise this is, uh, this is um, X direction, Y direction, and this is the Z direction. Okay, so we can visualize like this. From here you can see, um, for in terms of the membrane, in terms of this graph, and in terms of the circular metal ring, and we expect the contours of the membrane diffraction is pretty much uh, concentric. Right? That's good. And in this way, the concentric, and then we know the, uh, the diffractions for example, with respect to this one, that means the diffraction, the change in the elevation of the diffraction in the x direction basically is telling by the gradient along this direction. Right? Good. Again, for this number, that indicating is the gradient of the contour along y directions. Good. Okay. For circular contour, this one and this one pretty much uniform. Good? Okay. Compared to this one, so that means if we would have a circular sh shaft, okay, and compared to this one, then we can expect because in from our experience of imagining the diffraction of the membrane, we know that for circular um, Boundaries, and we expect the two are uniform. So that means compared to this one, we can expect this one in x direction, y direction, uniform. Okay. So keep this thing, then we can play. So right now, let me consider uh, a metal ring, and you can see kit. If they buy the good one, they not only this, or even uh, you can help to make a one. So here, uh, my example is this one here. So if I would make a metal ring, like this shape, and I immerse in the soap and get it out, initially that is the, um, the soap film basically filled up here. Then we begin to apply pressures, then the membrane going to uh, deform, right? So now I'm going to plot the contour, just like here. So here will be something like this. And then when approaching to these boundaries, so it's going to be distorted a little bit. And then something like this one. 
here I use is my imaginations, but this imagination should be very practical because that everyone played this before. Everyone has the feeling, right? Okay. So once we figure out from our experience about the contour of the diffractive memory shape, then we can begin to say, try to mimic, so for example, this uh, corresponding to the uh, shaft has the cross-sectional shape like the T-shape like this one. So from here, we will be able to study is, for example, where could be the, the maximum uh, string stress would occur. Then if we want to answer these questions, this string stress component is proportional to this one. Proportional to, is equal to this one in analog to this one. So basically here we're looking for is a larger gradient in x direction, in y direction individually. So at least from our qualitative, we look for the contour which has a larger gradient. With larger gradient, that means as a level set, as a level curve, they have a denser distribution. That is where the larger gradient is. So here, here, and here. Okay. So that is the advantage of the um, the using memory analogy to right away to tell us in the shaft where the the qualitatively the the mark the larger stress is. Okay. So on the other side. So from here, we know that around the corner, that has the huge, we're expecting that the, the distribution of the contour will be very dense, very dense. So that is where the stress concentration, we'll call the stress concentration, the stress concentration could be. Stress concentration is a sudden change, sudden increase in the magnitude of the stress, that called the stress concentration. So under that case, if for practical reasons, we want to reduce such as concentrated stress then we can apply fillet. Okay, so if we have the smooth geometry coming over here, so that will help relax the distribution, the density of the contours. And accordingly, using our analogy, that is going to help reduce the concentrated stress. Everything right now is applied to our, as a kid, our experience of playing the bubbles. Good? Okay, good? Okay. So um, so that is the one and then the next example I'm going to use more quantitative uh, example to demonstrate more uh, ways in this kind of analogy to see how much we can do about this. So Max probably can take a short break here.